Okay guys, so like I told you, we are buying a new boat, well new to us, a used boat. And when you are uh, working with a broker, several things that, let me take these off. If I'm sweating, it's because it's hot outside. But anyway, several things that you probably need to do. Of course, you have to search for a boat that you like, all the things that you want in it. Okay, then um, uh, you work with a broker, you kind of, if you find one, you negotiate the price with the owner. Okay, you come to a price, and then this the next step is where we are now because we we found a boat, we like it, we've negotiated the price, and so now we're here and we're doing what's called a survey. And if you're buying a used boat, I think you should do a survey um, because it tells you all the things that may or may not be wrong, uh, what you need to fix, what you could negotiate, all those different things about the boat that you're purchasing. Secondly, we'll do a sea trial, but they kind of go uh, fast or slow or however, but they just kind of test the boat. Uh, it's just like buying a house if you're gonna do a survey on a house or something like that. So before you invest your money, you want to know what you're buying. So with that being said, we are here with uh, the survey captain, I guess you would be Marine called. Surveyor. Marine surveyor. That's what it is. His name is John and he's going to be surveying our boat that we're buying today. And uh, he's going to tell us the ins and outs and what we need, what we can and cannot do without with the fix or whatever. Anyway, I, and you, of course you guys know my honey. So I'll let them take over from here because I'm just here to be cute. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Hold on one second. Okay. So I'm Bernard and I'm here with uh, Marine Surveyor John. Uh, highly recommended by our broker, so we're happy to have him. So John, let me just maybe basically start with just explaining for our friends out here, what does a Marine Surveyor do? What's the function? And then we'll talk about some of the stuff you actually look for in our boat. But what's the, what's a Marine Surveyor do for us? A Marine Surveyor is like, like your wife said, basically a house inspector for a boat. I go through all the systems on the boat, the electrical, the mechanical, the fiberglass, uh, the wetted surfaces, the running gear, the props, the shafts. Um, a boat is, a, is the probably the first tiny home ever for most people. I mean, everything is crammed into such small spaces and everything needs mm -hmm. to be inspected. You have, uh, a lot of things people don't understand. You have a, a head system or a sanitary system that has a, a vacuum flush tank and a holding tank and then a, a vacuum flush head and a shower and it's in a very compact unit and you know you need to make sure all that's uh, inspected for the Coast Guard and mm -hmm. compliant with Coast Guard regulations. Uh, make sure that uh, your fuel system is compliant with Coast Guard regulations, your electrical system. And this all in turn plays with your insurance company. When a surveyor does a survey, the, the survey is a lot of times sent to the insurance company so they can assess their risk and bind your boat for cover. Uh, okay, I didn't even know that part. That's really good to know. So when you look at the boat, is it that you actually physically do an inspection of the, of the engines? Do you put, hook up equipment to it? Uh, how do you kind of assess uh, or the or the the state rooms or the, the the display. How do you what do you use to help you assess it? Is it all just visual or are there some things you actually equipment you use or or apps or what? On some boats, it is um, you do hook up some equipment to the engines or some of the systems. This boat is all mechanical, mm -hmm. so there won't be any any uh, laptops hooked up to the uh, engines or, or any yeah. systems in here. Um, most of it's visual. I you know I check the oil to make sure it's not burned. I check the coolant. I check prop prop shafts and their seals to make sure they're not leaking. Um, when the boat comes out of the water, I'll use a hammer and do what's called phenolic testing on the bottom of the boat to make sure there's no delamination. And I also do that same phenolic testing on the deck and the hull on the top sides as well um, to determine whether any moisture has gotten into the deck or there's any delamination of the fiberglass. And would that be what I kind of refer to as soft spots? Is that Correct. what we're talking about? Soft spots. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so your inspection is here at the dock, but then you actually drive the boat too. And when you're driving it, what are you looking for when you're driving it? When you're driving the boat, you know, you're looking for what your speed is at idle, what your speed is through the range of RPMs, uh, and making sure that your boat will get to the manufacturer specified rated RPM and not overheat and not have any problems at that RPM. Um, 
and then we'll go back to what the manufacturer's cru recommended cruising RPM is. Run at that cruising RPM for 10 or 15 minutes and make sure that we don't have any overheats, no alarms. Uh, check the engine to make sure there's no oil leaks or blow by. Uh, just do a complete visual to make sure everything's good. And then after the run, then do you come back and look for any uh, water that may have gotten into the, 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 the boat? Okay. All right, that's very good to know. And then I know there's also a part of the uh, survey where you actually take the boat out up out of Correct. the water, and that's where you're doing the inspection with the hammer. Correct. Any, anything else you're looking for at that point? Um, you're running your, your shafts, make sure there's no corrosion on your shafts or your struts, your rudders. Make sure the cutlass bearings are good on the on the prop shaft. Make sure your shafts are good. Uh, I don't see and I don't see any twisting in the keyway. Make sure everything is secure on the on the bottom of the vessel. Make okay. sure all your through holes look good. Okay. And then when you finish all of this, what does that actually look like? Is it a is it a report that we get? Is You'll get a, a computer generated report. This between thirty and sixty pages, depending upon the findings and how many pictures we put in it. And uh, okay. the report will give you a vessel rating is a is a vessel fair average above average or Bristol. Very few times you get a Bristol boat, even boats out of the yard, brand new. Yeah, normally it's aren't hard Bristol. to get that top. It, it is. It is. Um, then you'll get a a value of the vessel and a and a replacement value, meaning if liking kind boat, brand new, what it would cost uh, as a replacement value. And I think the insurance companies probably want to know that as well. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, that's been very helpful. Thank you. I hope that's been helpful to you guys. And if you have any more questions, you can send them to, to my wife, Ebony, and we'll try to get them answered for you. Take care. Okay, guys. I forgot to tell you what kind of boat we're getting. Okay, so we've been looking all around, and what we've uh, kind of found was a Sea Ray. So it's the Sea Ray, I guess the brand and the uh, model would be the 380 model. I guess I'm not looking at my husband. Okay, so this Sea Ray 380, and uh, it's an older boat. It's a 99, so it's an older boat, but it's very nice. We love it, but um, I'll let you look around so you can see if you love it, and you guys could tell us. And um, let me see what else about it. Uh, nothing. It's a Sea Ray 380. Anyway, I'm gonna turn around and let you guys see. Huh? Okay, Mahana said to tell you guys that it's been converted uh, for diesel engines, which is very important because diesel engines don't really give you trouble. I, I heard that gasoline engines give you a lot of trouble on the water sometimes, but diesel engines don't. And so, talking to the surveyor, he said it's been a really good engine job on the uh, diesel engine, so that's great. But um, anyway. I'm gonna turn it around so you guys can see the boat. I'm, a, I'm gonna walk around so you can just see how it looks. All right, give me just one second. So this is our new baby. This is the Sea Ray 380C right here. That is called a swim platform. That's what kind of lures so that uh, you can get in and out of the water easily and get back on the boat. So that's called the swim platform. This is called the cockpit. I'll, I'll take you in here in just a minute, but let me show you the outside, but anyway. So this is our Sea Ray that we're about to get. If it all works out well, which I think it will. The guy said, nothing too, too major. So what is this part called, babe? The bow. So this is the bow of the boat. I'm about to take this class so I can tell you more about what different parts of the boat is. But this is the bow. So we're gonna get some sun pads up there so we can all hang out. Then, gonna take you around. This is, baby, come help me up. Hold on one second, y'all. Just gonna pull over. Oh, help me. Please don't trip over any That's okay. So. This is the cockpit area. They have it lifted up for the engines. But anyway, so this is the seating. See, this has a little bit of what? What they say this was? This dried. 
it's, it's uh, sunscreen, sunscreen oil. Sunscreen oil. So that we're going to get it reupholstered. Uh, yeah, that causes it to get discolored. Okay, so so nothing major on that. So, but we're going to get it reupholstered anyway. That's the table, and these are the engines uh, that we were talking about earlier. They had to lift it up to test the engines. So it looks like that. And this is the front. I mean, this is what's called helm. this. Huh? This is the helm of the boat where you operate. And this is the called the technology that is associated with um, navigating the boat. So this is how it look from here. And uh, yeah, so that's that on that the helm and then we'll go down to what's this called the interior the interior and i'm gonna walk down it's all jumbled up because they're walking around so this is the uh galley and they're taking all this stuff out make sure it works this is a stove here let me see if i can open this for you stove to uh range stove to burner i'm sorry this is a little sink i don't think you need to see anyway sorry i'll put that back in a minute anyway refrigerator and freezer what is this storage storage units more storage stuff um this is the back it's a seating area but it's also uh, a, a berth, a bed room, so uh, so it converts into a bedroom. Of course, that's John doing his job and I'll get out of his way. And then this is the main V berth, I guess that's what they call it. So this is our little bedroom. How cute! Come on, legs. No, <laughs> anyway. Um, this is the bathroom and the shower and the commode and the sink. It's called what's called a wet head because the shower, you just kind of, uh, you close this up and that's the shower. So you, of course you let the toilet down and it's kind of a, a, acts as a seating for your shower. So that's a wet head shower. And let me see closet area more stuff and that's it so this is our little boat hopefully and I'll let you guys know okay bye bye I'm sorry I thought I'd show you the uh what's this called again again the bow where the sun pads go. And so I'll walk up and this is where we're gonna put our little sun pads and be all cute. And I'll turn around so you can see. There's Bernard, say hi honey. Okay, so hopefully. Oh, that's the radar system. And the, uh, look like some kind of satellite there. So all these things get checked out when you're purchasing the boat and hopefully it works or it's compatible with whatever you're going to uh, replace it with or whatever but you get a full report on all of that and so we'll figure out we'll figure it out and the next step for us will be uh, taking it over to Seabrook to pull it out of the water and uh, figure it out so I'll, I'll record that too okay hey guys okay so we just came back from lunch and we are about to go to sea trial. He's checked out all of the boat, and so now we have to take it to sea. And uh, we're gonna take it over. We live in Houston, and so we're gonna take it over to Seabrook, pull it out of the water, and check out the, the bottom of the boat and all that stuff, and all the other stuff they need to check out. And then, um, uh, I'll, show, I'll just show you when we get there, okay. Okay guys, we are about to go to sea trial and I had to change because my, um, I thought I brought my batteries for my, uh, for my camera but I only bought one and 
it's a little low so it may I may have to use my phone so the quality may be a little different but oh well so I'll show you guys in a minute all right they're getting ready to take the boat out this is our captain for today this is our self God for the day of course you know our God that is doing the survey and our captain so we're going out Okay. that clean under the bottom. There's a lot of barnacles, lots of crud, a lot of everything that usually is at the bottom. But um, the guy said that it had a bottom job, which I call the bottom job, where they clean it and they repaint it, that kind of thing. So he said it had a very recent bottom job. So it, uh, that's the reason why it looks so clean. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the last part of the inspection is that they're going to put it back out on the water and run it open to see how fast it goes and if it holds steady, I guess. If it holds steady. So, okay, give us a second. That's it. Hold on, baby. Hold on, baby. This is him. Going super fast to see how fast it goes. Hold steady. Everything, and I guess I'll let them say they little last little stuff. Hold on. So okay. We're here with John, and we finished our the bulk of the the survey. Uh, we just came back from having a boat hauled out, and I guess now, John, the next step is what to do a report. I'll finish the report for you with all the deficiencies, um, and give it to you for your review, and just discuss with the seller on the proper with. 
and then when I get the report, if I have questions, do I call you? Do I you call, call the broker? Yeah. Call you. Yeah. Okay. And then we got over here our captain. Yeah, captain, captain for today. Mike. Yay, Mike. Yeah, Mike, what's the name of your company? Mike has uh, a company. Zap Services. Wait, say it again. Zap Services. Zap Services. Okay. Explain to it what, what services you guys provide. Everything that deals with the boat. Whatever you need done. Oh, Whatever cool. Whatever you need. Captain, need bear on your boat. Okay. Oh, cool. All right. That's what you think about the boat? Ran great. Ran great? Okay. Worth and buying? You just found minor stuff, so it's all fixable. Minor. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Both of Thank you, John. <laughs> all right, babe. Okay, guys. So, I'm just sweating like a pig, girl. But anyway, so we are done with our trial and everything and I think he's going to get it so I think we get a boat well I think it's some minor things that he's going to go back and forth with uh, with the owner but from what I see and how excited he is and the fact that the guys are saying it's a pretty good boat a good solid boat I think we're going to get it so the ebony queen is coming home with us alright Hi guys, so I want to give you an update. If you've been watching us, you know we have put in an offer on a boat and all that stuff, so I'm going to recap for those who are kind of new. So we've been working with Texas Sport Fishing Yacht Sales, and they've been really good. They've showed us lots of boats to choose from, even though it's a hot market right now. They've got a pretty good selection of boats, and they're always getting new ones, so check them out if you get a chance. But we've been working with them, and we found a boat that we really liked. We uh, Got all the details about it, made an offer on it, negotiated the price a bit, and we actually came to an agreement on price pending survey. And so for those of you who are new to our watching, a survey means inspection. It's like getting a house inspection. You get somebody, a professional, to go in and look at all the systems, and they'll do a report for you, and then it helps make you make an informed decision. So we had the survey done uh, yesterday, and part of that includes what's called the sea trial. It's a test drive, basically. And so when we did the survey, everything looked good. Uh, there were some issues because of the age of the boat, but we already knew that going into it, uh, there's gonna be some outdated things. And you factor that into your pricing. One thing that we liked about the boat was the fact that it has diesel engines. And that's a big issue in the boating world um, because diesel, are, diesel engines are known to last longer, be more durable, and a better investment over the long haul. So we like that. Well, we did the sea trial, had a little bit of overheating issue with the engines. So we continued to do our due diligence. We asked some friends of ours who, more, who were more experienced boaters what their thoughts were. And they said, hey, um, you need to ask certain questions. So we did, we asked those questions. We, uh, we called around to some of these uh, service businesses around, the, the businesses that services the boats, and we said, hey, are you, are you guys familiar with these particular diesel engines? Well, it turns out, after talking to about three places, they weren't really familiar with those particular diesel engines. It turns out that it was not a very mass-produced type of engine, and so getting parts for the engine is pretty difficult and finding a service provider who can actually do the work on those engines, not a lot of them in the area. Hmm. So, my point to you is, continue to do your research when you're gonna buy a boat, because it's a big investment. And now that we kinda learned this, although we like the boat, we don't love the boat. So, like it, don't love it. In other words, we're gonna move on. And we're gonna continue, we'll, follow, we'll let you follow along with us on our journey, but we're back in the market looking again. So, do your research, Talk to the experts, talk to your friends, do your own Google searches like I've been doing, and call up those dealers, call up the service repair people, and talk to those people who are hands-on with those technical and mechanical things about the boat. Good luck, and we'll see you soon.